What's up, y'all? This is Eric Roberson. And this is Gary George, BlazerMultimedia.com. And we are rocking with you guys on Roundup Radio. What's up, man? Hey, man, how are you? Good. So how's it been going so far uh, since you released the, uh, the third book? Well, I have, you know, I've gotten great responses. I just got a response put in front of me from the Washington Post from yesterday. I guess it's from yesterday, and it was like four or five stars or something. It's ridiculous. Excellent. So it's been very good. I mean, the response is Mr. Falcon called me and told me, or, or I didn't do it. He told Captain Dennis to tell me he reads two books a week for 50 years, and it's one of his best books he's read in a year. Excellent. You've gone through many significant lifestyle changes over the years, and, and in a very public fashion, you've kind of introduced us all to yoga and meditation and, and being transitioned into becoming a vegan. And I wanted to see kind of in what order you made those changes in your life. Did well, you become... the first was, it was, it was the, the physical practice I went because there were so many cute girls, and, and there was 60 girls and me and my buddy Bobby Shriver. Mm-hmm. And we had a, and I had a great experience. It came out, and it was a little bit of... Um, the noise was settled just a bit in my head, and I, I was amazed. And I, I addicted this 17 years ago. I've been going every day since, pretty much, you know, and it's been um, an important part of my life. Now, uh, within a few years, I started to read uh, the most basic scriptures, the Yoga Sutras and Bhagavad Gita and Hatha Yoga Padipika and these books, and mm-hmm. they had an effect on me, but they kind of just reminded me of what the asana practice gave me. You know, and um, and in and, and these books, what they remind you, what's in the Torah or the Bible or the Quran or, Quran or you know, what's in, you know, the Yoga Sutras is the same, right? But but you know, for me, I'm you know, I studied those those books. I just had Imam Faisal and Rabbi Snyder in here about ten minutes ago, mm-hmm. and they're sitting there talking about the similarities in their religions. Their religions are exactly the same, but it, you know, there, there's those little differences mm-hmm. have nothing to do with the ethical behavior. And the and the the, the purposes, the social uh, values of these these practices, and the spiritual values, and and the roads where do the roads lead? You know, to the same state. And we as yogis call it samadhi, and Buddhists call it nirvana, and Christians call it Christ consciousness. And you know, everybody's got a name for a place where you're in union with God. Mm-hmm. So this practice for me was the one that you know, inspired these books and. Uh, this last two books, and you know, and um, people I never would expect, you know, tell me not only that five star Washington Post review, but or any of the other reviews, but people I don't hear from forever, Mr. Farrakhan. Why would he call me out of the you know, and say that? that? That he reads two books a week for for you know fifty years, right? And that, that book was one of the best reads he's had. And so for me, I am um, interested in putting it in prisons and in schools and in places where. People don't read a lot or don't have access to these kind of scriptures or the simplification of these scriptures or promotions. I call it uh, the Yoga Sutras. Some people, not, not only me, but call it the, uh, the science of happiness. Mm-hmm. The science of yoga is the science of happiness. Because the scriptures, especially the Yoga Sutras, it was the how-to book, isn't it? That's all it is, the how-to book. And this book is you know, very similar in its, in its approach. It's like, here's the, here are the practices, here's how you do some of them, and Here's what you can expect. Now, the money goes to, to charity. The, the, the um, purpose of the book is, is, is obvious, uplift people. And, um, and, and it's worth, you know, it's, it's a worth, uh, worth doing the work, you know. What, what does it do for you to write these books and contribute to, well, to the people? Well, the first it was just a, kind of a simplification of, of the science so for myself, in a way. They gave me some money. I gave some of it to charity, and, and I made the book. And then when Oprah discovered it, it made such a big deal, it made me want to, write this second book. Five mm-hmm. years later now, I have a book that is more of an offering, you know, that, that we hope will you know, affect more people because so many people told me the book changed their life and made me want to write this book. So, okay, well, that's, you, you bring up a valid point. You actually, this is your third book, right? Third book was my life story, Sex, Drugs, Money, and God. Right. Now, how was it writing, how was writing, you know, that book, Life and Death versus Do You or, or Super Rich? They, they Super kind Rich of come from two different places. The first book was a you know, just a self-reflection to some degree, and it was useful. The second book was self-reflection through the scriptures and, you know, and simplifying them and kind of... This book was an offering. Mm-hmm. This book was, all, you know, it came from me just trying to simply, you know, an honest effort to lift people up. Right. Now, from what I understand, I mean, your yoga practice led you to your meditation practice, and this book has, uh, it's all about the meditation practice and what it brings to you. a lot about you. meditation, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I put it in many schools around the country, and I have such great results, and there's so much research on what it does for people. 
that I think all kids should have what we call quiet time. We don't want religious people upset with us because people sit quiet, and they do sometimes, so we just call it quiet time. <laughs> now, I know you're a TM practitioner, right? Yes. Talk about what the practice has done for you personally, well, it's, for people it's, who are. Uh, you know, the idea yeah. of all of these practices are to slow the world down so you can see the miracles. You look at the world and you see all these beautiful things in front of you, and you miss them all when you have too much noise in your head. When you can slow the noise, that's when you can start to see, you know, um, or focus. You know, and nobody invents the atom with a hundred thoughts in his head. It's one thought, single point focus. That's how you execute. That's how you laugh. That's how you have fun. That's how you enjoy life. That's it. When you get the noise out of your head. Mm-hmm. I've got uh, a few questions from our listeners. And Tanya wanted to know, what changes have you noticed uh, since practicing yoga, and, and how do you find the time to incorporate that into your daily life being so busy? Uh, well, they say, as a monk who said, if you can't meditate for 20 minutes in the morning, you need two hours. So I take my time every day for that. And I take my time. I want to leave here. I'm going to go to class later, no matter what they say. So I do both, you know, and I think it's important. And I think, you know, you're more effective when you can, um, when you do meditate. You want to see the world. You don't want the noise to separate you from your best work. And you want to clean your head, your head from noise. I mean, that, this is the second sutra of Yoga Shita Friti Naroda, and it means something very simple. And it's what yoga equals is the cessation and the fluctuation of mind. When noise is gone, there's only God. You know, and everybody's full of noise, their brains. And, and, and that's why someone like Jesus Christ would say, be still and know. That's why every teacher talks about what operating from stillness so that in the moment that you're still, you need nothing. And the, the word super rich, the name, the book super rich, the, is, the, the title is uh, The State of Needing Nothing. That's what super rich is. Uh, you know, so we wrote that whole first chapter when redefining rich. And we promised another thing that was, you know, like Jesus taught two sermons. One, that, that to the masses, that if you do this, you'll get that. If you live a certain life, you're a good servant, and you keep giving, you'll get. You had to promise them. His disciples, if you do these things, you'll be happy. Mm-hmm. So right. I want to speak to people and say this is the end result, but here's what we are. Now, I know you have kids. Have you introduced the kids to yoga and veganism and uh, My meditation? My kids are not vegan, uh, but they do have a good diet. Their mother is very, you know, doesn't give them dairy and doesn't give them a lot of stuff. But what they about? Are med- they're meditators. There you go. My kids are. They meditate daily. I mean, how does that work? How did you introduce them to it? I sent a teacher. Got it. Russ, I think I got it. Um, yeah, yeah, if you want to give uh, just a, a wrap-up about the book and just, just encourage people to say book, it. Whole, my prayer is that the book will really help people to, to make their lives simpler and, and happier and make them more productive. <laughs>